Welcome to our worship gathering for August 9th, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost in our church year. Today we share from the Gospel of Matthew how Jesus walked on water to meet his disciples in the midst of a raging storm. We give thanks for you who have joined us through YouTube. Your time with us serves as a powerful reminder that the body of Christ is one even when we are separated, as now. We pray God be with you as we set apart this time for scripture, song, and prayer. Bless you. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. And in his hands are depths of the earth, and the mountains peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the flock under his care. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. 
We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. And preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain to by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. 
But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed a strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, Do you have little faith? Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I know my family hates it when I overshare in a sermon. They may worry that people from the congregation will ask them embarrassing questions about our home life later on. On the other hand, congregation members tell me that they like when I share information from my personal life in a sermon. Maybe they like it because they can relate to what I say. Or maybe they like it because it gives them an opportunity to ask my family members embarrassing questions about our home life later on. So let me go back to a time long ago, before I met my wife and before my children were born. When I was in high school, I played football. Once I took a hit that I won't forget. I was a junior on the kickoff receiving team. At the start of the second half, we were to receive the kick. At the whistle, our opponents kicked. We turned and dropped back to receive. Our halfback caught the ball, and we turned to set up our blocks for his run attempt. I remember the turn. I remember an opponent's helmet driving directly into my chest and knocking every bit of wind out of my lungs. I stayed standing somehow. The whistle blew. Our halfback had been taken down, and I trotted off the field. I couldn't breathe. No in, no out, nothing. I recall sitting down on the bench, standing up, leaning over, leaning back, wondering if I would ever be able to breathe again. Coach Finbo asked if I was OK. I gave him a brave thumbs up. In my mind, this went on for hours, but in reality, paralysis may have lasted less than a couple minutes. Slowly, bit by bit, my air returned. I finished the game. 44 years later, I can still recall the feeling of that hit to the chest. I could have used a good, trustworthy, and believable word of reassurance to calm me in the moment of panic that I felt when the breath was knocked out of me. Jesus ordered his disciples to get into a boat and cross the Sea of Galilee ahead of him. After they left, Jesus dismissed the crowd, the thousands that had just been fed with the five loaves and two fish. Then Jesus, finally alone, went up on the mountain to pray. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, and the winds were against them, his disciples were still far from shore. So Jesus went to them, walking across the water. When they saw him, they couldn't know what they were seeing. Is it a ghost? And they were terrified and began to cry out. But Jesus immediately called to them, Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered, Lord, if it is you, command me, and I will come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked toward Jesus. But then Peter saw the wind howling, and he began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out and caught him. I hear fear in that gospel story, the fear of the disciples in the presence of an unknown circumstance, fear 
from Peter in his failed attempt to step out beyond his abilities. But this is, for me, the story of power in Jesus to come to us in the midst of fear, to calm us in the midst of the unknown and save us with an outstretched hand. Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. The story of Jesus coming to the aid of his disciples is a powerful spiritual tool for those times in our lives when we feel out of control. Do you feel the loss of control in your life? Like you are unable to make headway toward a goal or that no matter what you do, your circumstances lead you leave you bound up or stuck in place. Maybe you feel like you are losing out on opportunities or missing experiences that you have longed for or worked for. We feel stresses in our lives from many quarters, maybe imposed externally by the expectation of others, maybe internally by our own expectations of ourselves. In the book Story Journey, the author related how the story of Jesus walking on the water was used to help Maria, a woman in pastoral counseling, find healing. Maria suffered from agoraphobia, a fear of open places. Because of her fear, she was unable to drive and extremely reluctant to leave her home. The phobia had serious effects on her social life, requiring her to lie about why she was unable to go to places or accept invitations to even common things like a coffee meetup. And it created growing stress on herself and her family. Her pastor suggested forming a healing team from a list of people Marie felt had a depth of faith which she could draw not necessarily her friends. The team was chosen, six people. Discussion of agoraphobia and its impact on Marie's life, and the introduction of Matthew 14, 22 to 33, Jesus walking on the water, followed. The use of the story, fear, his word, courage, were studied. These elements of the story were used by each member of the team learning to tell the story themselves. The story quickly became Marie's story. Slowly, Marie began to venture out of her house and drive greater distances. She began to challenge her fear with faith. This happened within three months after the group began meeting. The high point of the healing team's life was a coincidental invitation by the spouse of a healing team member to have a social event on a houseboat. Recognizing that this event could be filled with threat for Marie, he first withdrew the invitation and apologized. But Marie said, no, I would like to try it. Prepared with the story of Jesus walking on water, and hearing Jesus' words for her, courage, don't be afraid, I am with you. Marie had broken the limits of her phobia. Knowing Jesus' story, hearing the intersection of Jesus' story and Marie's story has given me a boost on occasions to step out of my own comfort zone and face life's challenges. Don't be afraid, I am with you is the promise that goes with me when I go down an unknown path. These words from Jesus are also there for us when we get blindsided, when all the wind is knocked out of us, when we feel panicked or engulfed in fear. His word is a good, trustworthy, and believable word of reassurance to calm us in uncertain times. We see Jesus reach out his hand to Peter sinking in the water. We see him reach out his hands on the cross of crucifixion for each of us. Don't be afraid. I am with you. Jesus has already made his story our story. 
Our Lord has already taken hold of us. He holds us by the hand. Amen. Using the Apostles' Creed, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For your whole church throughout the world, give courage in the midst of storms so that we see and hear Jesus calling, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the nations and their leaders, in you steadfast love and faithfulness meet, and righteousness and peace kiss. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice and the justice that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. Accompany me all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish and support those who are frustrated in their, in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our congregation, you have gathered us here in this way as your people, and we thank you for this gift. 
We pray for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for a new and unprecedented school year, and for those struggling with unexpected hardship. Supply us generously with your grace for our life together and apart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you have gathered to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.